Today, I am walking through the wealthiest community in all of Canada, West Vancouver. The average household worth here is roughly 30 times that of the families in my home province, New Brunswick. People often say money doesn't buy happiness, but I gotta say, walking through this neighborhood really makes me wonder how true that saying is. So for this video, I wanna look at the research to see if having more money actually does make us happier. And the answer is yes. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Stay tuned for more content from us on Cognitive Dissonance with CBC. Thanks again. Make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and we'll see you in the next one. Okay, so the link between money and happiness definitely exists. But research into this topic shows that the connection is a little more complicated than we might think. So, I sat down with Dr. Lori Santos, a professor of psychology at Yale and host of the podcast, The Happiness Lab. The biggest misconception about happiness concerns money. You know, many of us think if we could just get lots more money, we would be happy. And the research shows that that, that is true if you're currently living below the poverty line, right? If you can't put a roof over your head, you know, you can't you know, put food on the table, of course, getting more money is probably gonna improve your level of flourishing. But for most of us living a middle-class existence, is there a threshold after which more money doesn't matter, right? Or money, more money doesn't help your happiness very much. And the estimates vary. There does seem to be such a threshold. Um, one famous paper um, from the early 2000s found that that threshold in the US at least was about 75,000 US dollars. Now, once you hit 75,000 US dollars, any more money wasn't gonna make you much happier. Now there's probably some wiggle room if you, you know, live in an urban center where things are expensive, you know, versus like you live in more of a rural location. But the fact is, if you look at folks at every income level, most of them think if I could just get a little bit more money, I would be happier. And the reason is this phenomenon that psychologists call hedonic adaptation. Right? We kind of just get used to all the good things in life, whether you know we're kind of living a reasonable middle class existence or we're super wealthy. Whatever level you're at, you get used to that. And then when you're thinking like, gosh, I'm not feeling as happy as I could, your hypothesis is like, oh, I know it will work. I just need more stuff or I just need more money. Um, but the fact is that whatever level we get to, hedonic adaptation is going to kick in and we're going to end up just back to baseline in the same way we were before, even if we get more money, more stuff, more whatever. In a 2010 Princeton study, you can pretty much see the income brackets where hedonic adaptation begins to kick in. Once individuals reached an annual income of 40,000 US dollars, their increase in happiness became less significant the more money they earned, before leveling off completely at 75,000 a year. Now, in Canada, that means before the pandemic, roughly one quarter of all households had reached the point where earning more will have little to no effect on their overall happiness. However, for the other three quarters of Canadians, more money would definitely have an impact specifically in regards to reducing stress and increasing a sense of security. In fact, researchers in the Princeton study went so far to say that while more money does not necessarily buy more happiness, less money is associated with emotional pain. And that's a troubling connection right now as new data is beginning to show just how hard Canada's working class has been hit by the pandemic, with 39% of Canadians doing worse off now than they were at the start of 2020. You know, a super easy way to make somebody feel really unhappy about their income is to make them lose some amount of their salary they were getting before. And that's pretty dangerous for our happiness in the current moment, where many of us may have lost jobs. Even if we have our jobs, maybe we're not earning as much. Some folks are getting furloughed or businesses aren't making as much money. And that means many of us right now are facing an economic reference point, as the researchers call it, that's worse than we were at before. And I think this is really critical. You know, sometimes we can act like, you know, money doesn't matter at all. But for some of the people watching the show, money might matter a lot. And I think we need to think about that as we're thinking about welfare concerns and sort of making sure, you know, say everybody's earning a living wage, everybody have a, has a roof over the head. Those things actually matter a lot. While the financial toll of COVID-19 is first and foremost a systemic problem that requires systemic solutions, there's at least hope that we're better equipped to adapt to these challenging times than we typically believe. That's because hedonic adaptation doesn't just kick in to bring us back to baseline when life is great. It's also a stabilizing force that allows us to emotionally cope when things are at their worst. This is what researchers call uh, this phenomena of post-traumatic growth, which is after a bad event, you end up more resilient and stronger on the other side and stronger in a few ways. One is that 
we tend to find more meaning in life. You know, so you think of your life as more purposeful and more meaningful. We often end up with more social connections and stronger social connections after going through something crummy. Um, but importantly, we often feel like we're more resilient. Like we walk into situations of like, yep, I've been through the worst that can happen. I'm going to be good no matter what. And so I think, you know, when we're dealing with yucky times like 2020, and I think 2020 for many of us has been a yucky time, it's worth remembering that those tough times can really make us stronger according to the research. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, then make sure to click the subscribe button. If you have a topic or an idea that you want us to cover in cognitive dissonance, then make sure to leave that in the comments below. And I will see you in the next one.